Hi, welcome to Science Club Podia. This is where I talk about science in everyday life. I dedicate this podcast to kids and their whole family to enjoy. And anyone who wants to listen from a kid's perspective, enjoy. Just call me um, Om Desra. As my hair cannot grow. It's very important. Education is very important, and education is very important. So I think role models and dreams are important because dreams help you guide. Then, oh my God, he took my ring. I'm sorry. My question for Ambassador Desra is: I will ask a question to Mr. Ambassador. Always take the positive side from everyone. Rainer,、uh, may I ask you a question? Je m'appelle Reno. J'adore science. Ah. Tu parles français aussi alors? Nice. Stem, but he uses stem, and then English is good. Yeah, yep.、Yeah. I extremely agree with you. Stem is very important. Hi everyone. I am extremely excited today because I'm going to be speaking with Ambassador Desra Perchaya, and he is currently the ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia in the United Kingdom, Ireland, and the International Maritime Organization. I'm just a bit hard to say organization. It's, it's hard. So. Hello. So he also completed his PhD at Durham University in the UK. I'm I'm just so excited that I get to speak with him. I don't know why, but I like to speak with important people, and I have so many interesting questions that I like to ask of him and his hobbies, like his cute cats and his saxophone. But most importantly, STEM and Indonesia and how STEM can help us. And if you don't know what STEM is or STEAMed. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and maths. But STEAMed, science, technology, engineering, architecture, maths, and design. That's more than STEM, and I think it should be worth more. So join me to welcome Ambassador Desra Perchaya. Hi, Ambassador. Hi, Rainer. I'm very excited, but just before we start, because I don't want to make you uncomfortable, how shall I address you? To be honest, I'm nervous、uh, to be interviewed by you, Rainer. I don't know why. Just call me、um, Om Desra. Okay, because I asked this because this is the first time I've ever interviewed a high-ranked government official, and, and I don't really want to disrespect them. Not at all. So Om Desra, when did you arrive from London from Indonesia to be the ambassador? I arrived here on the eighth of December,、oh. early morning this year. I think about、uh, two weeks ago. Okay, yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Two, two weeks ago was actually quite a short time, actually. <laughs> yes,、uh, short time, but、uh, given the fact that a lot of important things between Indonesia, United Kingdom, and IMO, I feel that two weeks is quite short. And I also know that Simba and Melly are also here. Can I can I see them again? Because they just look so cute. Because I'm a big cat fan. All right, I think、uh, Simba and Melly here. I think.、Uh, Uh, my wife Tante Sari will try to bring them here. Melly is a bit shy, while Simba is, is、uh, very much、uh, open and likes to show off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Simba. Here, here, Simba, Simba, Simba. Come on, come on, come on, come, come, come. Look, this is Simba. This is Simba. Looks cute. This is the trick with the sharp paper. He will come. Okay, looks cute. And speaking of cats, do you want to have like a tiny session? We talk about the sounds of cats. But I know one fact that will amaze you. Did you know that cats can actually survive, has a higher survival rate falling from a thirty-floor building than a seven-floor building? Isn't that amazing? Wow,、well, I didn't know that. It's very amazing. But what I know. Cat 
thinks that they are the boss, they are the master, and we are the servant. Am I right? Uh, yeah, um, because the cats are like cute, like, like they, they look nice, basically like, imagine the king and the cats are the king, then the cats look nice and cute. And do you want to know why? Because at seven floors, if they fall seven floors, then they reach their terminal velocity. And the terminal velocity means it stops accelerating. And the terminal velocity is at 62 miles per hour. And then when they come, they land down and it feels like they just, they didn't fall. But from a seven story, the, the cats could get hurt or injured. So that's basically all I, that's all of my amazing facts. And Pat Desra, what was your role before your current role in London as an ambassador? Thanks for enlightening me and also letting me know about the amazing cat. I think I will read more on that. And going back to your question, what was my role? I was what we call it, Director General for Asia, Pacific and Africa. And I was covering 114 countries all over the world. In what? Asia, 114 countries. Indonesia, um, East Asia, Southeast Asia, Pacific, South Asia, Central Asia, Middle East, and Africa. That's why, Rainer, you know why? Surprise, surprise, my hair cannot grow. <laughs> One pop up and then gone again because of the, the load, the workload. Isn't it amazing why men cannot ha have hair because of the, the workload? I don't know, in terms of science, what do you think? What is the logic behind it? Uh -huh. um, I don't really think there is any logic behind it. Mm -hmm. Though, maybe because you work so much, right? you sweat so much and after that, um, your hair falls off or something. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're very kind, Rainer. <laughs> I think it's about DNA. Uh, I also noticed that uh, my father uh, more or less uh, lost hair also like me. Uh, I don't know about my son, but I think this is about uh, genetic and DNA, right? Yeah, yeah, it has to be some of that. Yeah. My grandpa also um, lost his hair because when I was sleeping with him, um, um, one of his hairs came up and then it's like... It tick tickled my nose, and then I was like, "What?" And then I woke up at like nine o'clock in Jakarta for my holiday two years ago. <laughs> yeah, like hair loss is quite scary and quite weird if you're sleeping. But yeah. Not really, because when you get old like me, I have no other choice but uh, live with it. <laughs> also amazing how you discovered all of those countries because I just can't believe it that you just found out 114 countries and like, I'm just yeah. amazed like, there's no way to describe it yeah for that reason uh, I think uh, I often uh, met by Jokowi because when there is uh, there was a dignitaries uh, visiting uh, Jakarta and meeting with the president so I had to assist uh, the foreign minister Minister Ratno and then uh, I had to also accompany her in accompanying the president to receive uh, uh, so many world leaders and also can, can you tell me what ambassadors do and why they're important well Basically, ambassador is to represent the head of state, which is Pak Jokowi, the president. Mm -hmm. And secondly, also to represent the country, the state, Indonesia. And thirdly, to represent the interests of Indonesia here in UK, Ireland, and IMO. Okay. So yeah. basically, you like the head you're basically like the pre president in a foreign country. Is, is, that, is that what you mean? More or less, yes, but I do not dare to say I'm the president. Yeah, because like, yeah, but because you met um, President Jokowi, 
did you also meet one of the the British world leaders like Queen Elizabeth, Boris Johnson, and Sadiq Khan? Did you get to meet them? Not yet, because I arrived here, then I had to do self quarantine, oh. and my self quarantine will end tomorrow. And oh. secondly, yes, uh, being an ambassador here. Officially, I have to present a credential. This is the letter from Pak Jokowi to Queen Elizabeth, appointing me formally as the boss of Indonesia here in UK. What? But but I still have to wait because of the coronavirus. Yeah. And I still have to wait because I was told there are about 30 ambassadors waiting and queuing to be received by Queen Elizabeth. So Chris, cross finger cross, pray for me, and I hope I'll be given the opportunity to be received and to be greeted and met by Queen Elizabeth II. Okay, so, so I really hope that you can do it because um, I know how you like, I'm going to meet um, Queen, Queen Elizabeth. I know that you might think that you're going to fail but, but I just hope, so like, I just really hope that you can really get it. Man, I'm sorry to ask this though, and speaking of London, I'm incredibly sorry to ask this, but I was wondering if an ambassador like you would get a free London bus and transport. Um, I'm still sorry to ask, but I just wanted to know. Why well, you have to say sorry, Rehan? This is a very, very valid question. I do not think I'm going to get that privilege, but mind you, I am a very sporty man. I will often do cycling in London and also do jogging. So I don't need this kind of ticket. I will walk, I will jog, and I will do cycling. That's, that's just like me um, when, I, when I walk to school and not, not for kids just um, get cars. And I think walking is fun. I like running too and jogging. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's very good to maintain and keep your body in a very good uh, shape, right? Yeah, because if you keep your body in a very good shape, you, you keep your, your muscles in good shape and yeah, yeah, you yeah. can live longer. Yeah, and also if you do sport, then you will feel fresh. Yeah. So when you read the book, you can easily focus. And if you feel tired, as simple as going to bed, sleep. So I think this is very good. Uh, regular exercise, do the sport, active physically, it's very good. But still, now we have to uh, ab ab abide by the protocol, right? Yeah, Rehan, I think uh, washing hand, wearing masks, social distancing are very important as well. Mm -hmm. Like the three major things. Um, the social distancing can stop the spread, the face mask can... Yeah stop the virus from spreading yeah. if the virus is already there and the washing your hands can actually prevent the virus from coming in through on your hands and then yeah. you put it in your eyes and you rub it so are you applying it are you practicing it i'm already doing it because oh, excellent. Whenever, whenever there's this guy and after i'm exercising out and then he's trying to jog after he he comes in a lane I just go to the side and I tell my mom, mommy, go um, to the side because you have to distance. And then my mom distances. And like, my, my think of it as a game where, um, it's not actually a game, but this is where I think it. There's a distance. You have to get as far as away as you can, but actually it's a bit more serious. And that's how I find social distancing. A bit fun, but a bit serious. Yep. So I got something about Indonesia. So ca can you tell me more about your childhood? And after that, I'll tell about um, STEM and all of that. Yeah. Renner, I came from a very big family. I think you'll be surprised uh, to listen, to know. I came from a big family. We are 11 all together. I have 10 siblings, name it, 10 what? siblings, yes. So I, I think uh, I grew up in a big family. I think what is important, 
uh, in the big family is about sharing sharing and caring this is very important in our family that's why for us um, in the big family my mom also reminded me and also give me a very good advice education is very important education is very important and education very important once you ask me about stem i think i cannot add more than this is very 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 important why if you want to have our country progressing advancing and be able to compete with any other countries in the world the key is education including stem mm -hmm. so can you tell me about your childhood and have you ever had a dream to be an ambassador and i also think that stem is extremely important because stem can help indonesia innovate and if one person can and more like launch a thousand satellites to help indonesia communicate and learn on an online platform other people other people can do it and you can do it also because as soon as imagine albert einstein and then you had and then you, you don't have the power, you don't, you can't do Einstein, but you can do something like it. You can be Einstein in art, you can be Einstein in basically everything. So actually, you can actually be good at everything, at least if you have someone to follow. And, and that's why I think role models and dreams are important because dreams help you guide your way. Dreams are basically your map to finding your your goal so if you have a goal the best way is you need a dream to complete your goal better yeah when i was little i wanted to be an army because my father was a uh, member of the air force but as uh, i get older i changed my dream uh, i wanted to become a medical doctor but then I changed again. I wanted to be a diplomat. Then I, from that point of view, from that point of uh, my point of life, then, oh my God, he takes my ring. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, you can have a drink. You can have a drink. Don't worry. Okay. So I think, uh, yes, a dream is very important. Definitely. But when you get older, you have to realize a uh, dream uh, in certain circumstances cannot be achieved. But what is important in our life for me, do something good, contribute to other people. Don't forget to the nation, to the state, to the country, and also do good to your family, to your mom, and to your dad. For me, that's very important. When it comes to the contribution or dreams to the country, I think you can do anything to contribute to the country. You rightly pointed out role model is very important. I think we have a different uh, role model because we are different. You are still very young. I think I do believe you love your dad and you see your dad also as a role model, but it can be anyone, a scientist, a famous one, I either Einstein or, or Nobel, uh, anyone, Alfred Nobel. But what is important, always take the positive side from everyone. I think, I think that's very important. Uh, no perfect man, there is no perfect human being, no perfect person yeah. in the world, but there must be positive from each of the individual of each person. Yes, that's it. And I want to you the three listening rules that my dad always tells me so you have to listen to your teacher listen to your parents and listen to yourself like if you want to be a scientist then don't say no i don't want to be a scientist just do, do whatever you want to do and um, just be free and listen um basically there are four listening rules that my dad say are extremely important i completely agree with you Rena. And also, um, I just want to tell, because you're an ambassador on Desra, what would it, 
What do you have to study to be an ambassador? And I got a few points. I think you have to learn about politics, economics, and communication skills. Yeah. Politics, economics, what? communication skills, yes. Law or legal. But now, I think with the current world, you have to know everything, including environment, human rights, the rights of the child, the rights of the women and girls, uh, so many other things. But once, if you want to be a diplomat, the first uh, requirement from the university, uh, economics, uh, politics, and law. And also, you have to do science to become an ambassador. Um, not for the diploma, but we did have special training, uh, especially when it comes to economics, uh, because when you talk about economics, you are talking about math. So I think there is certain element to, to it related to math, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like math is related to economics, like you know the supply curve and the demand curve um, yeah. they're very important in economics yeah. and we can also help countries and when i mean by economics i mean like economics is very important in every single country because you have to know economics or like the different prices you know like the different prices when indonesia has a weaker price than the uk you have to know the difference between them so, so i think economics is basically the best thing that you need to know if you want to rule a country or just say lead a country not rule a country yeah yeah economics i think you are talking, talking about uh, monetary about stability about currency about uh, trade export import investment so many things yes you're right that's very important so i got a question um i got a question because two of my friends of mine also want to ask questions and i got the recording right here they're hmm. renoir who's a young golfer and landon who's four years old here are the videos um, all right hello my name is landon <laughs> and I'm four years old. I like dinosaurs, and I will ask a question to Mr. Ambassador. What is your favorite book, Mr. Ambassador? And the next one, next video is from Red Cup Renoir. He's been on my podcast before. Hi. Um, so I'll just play it. Hi, I'm Renora Asme. I'm 13 and I've been playing competitive golf since I was nine. My question for Ambassador Desra is, do you have any sports that you personally like to play and enjoy? And what does the embassy do to support young athletes that might play regionally, nationally or internationally? Thank you. So, so Landon was so cute, huh? Yeah, yeah, he was so cute. When I, when I first received the video, I was like, I was laughing because, because he just looked so cute. <laughs> he did. Um, book. I think I read so many books uh, in my life uh, during my study here in England. But now I'm very much into reading books about traveling, about the country. And I'm now very much into reading about uh, history of United Kingdom, uh, about the country, about the people, about the culture and about the music. So I'm now more of into uh, this kind of book uh, with regard to uh, my job and also being here in London. Uh, with regard to question from Renoir, uh, I think at the embassy here, my job is also to make sure that uh, the state are present and also to facilitate and help uh, assist their needs. So when there is anyone uh, very much having 
the potential on sport, then it is my obligation uh, to make sure that he or she will develop uh, properly according to the sport that they are very much into and then connect it with the country, the relevant authority in the country. So I think this kind of uh, facilitation and matchmaking between those potentials and the one in the country. So I think this is also my job. Very good question from Renoir and a lovely question from the cute Landon. And I also recommend a book called The Book of Pi. And it's an it's not called the book of pie where it's humble pie and it's mm. an incredibly good book because there's lot, lots of maths accidents and the, sometimes the maths accidents can be extremely funny like in pepsi in 1995 pepsi mm. launched a new campaign called pepsi points mm. which you can buy for 10 cents and and then they had an ad where you can buy 7 million pepsi points for an AV8 Harrier, which is a jet plane, mm -hmm. and a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. And, there's a, and the ad was when the plane, he, the guy who got 7 million, and then he went into the plane, then he flew all the way to his office. And then there's this guy called Leonard, called Leonard. Um, but I don't know his last name mm -hmm. and he bought it and Pepsi didn't even care about how much the 7 million Pepsi points were worth and mm. that was just so funny yeah Rainer uh, may I ask you a question what why you are into the science why you're so interested why you are so uh, amazed into science not not like say to culture to music to like what the uh, people now, especially the young, like the Korean uh, wave, Korean music, dance, like those things. Why are you into into science? I admire you. I admire the science. Um, it's really hard to it's really hard to describe. But I just like science because it fascinates me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean to be like bad, but um, but once um, once I started doing the science, I was good at it. Um, but I still have to improve now because I'm good, and then I don't improve, and I have to keep on improving. Mm. And when I, when I practiced, my dad says practice makes perfect. And then I practiced about chemistry, and I mm. said um. H2O is water, and I was practicing like CH4 is methane, something like that. I was doing yeah. things. Yeah. Um, I practiced and I became good at it, and I was like, practice actually makes perfect. And also, I like science because science can help make a better world and improve humanity. Like, you can have some sort of video call, make vaccines, and yeah, it's, it's just really hard to explain why I like science. But mostly it's because of humanity and it's because I fas am fascinated in it. And what I mean by vaccines, I mean like the vaccines of major ep epidemics mm -hmm. like COVID-19 that I explained with Kat Indra in Oxford University like that when I mean vaccines and um, vaccines are actually important. Mm. Right, right. We do all hope that the uh, vaccine will be uh, uh, in F will be effective, uh, found very soon effective and also at the affordable price. Remember, Rainer, not all the countries can afford to buy vaccine. What do you think? I'm just like shocked when I hear that, like, Oh, not all countries can have the vaccine. Yeah. And sometimes, um, my, I just got this question. Why do you have to pay for vaccines? Why can't vaccines be free and then they can just be... Why, why do you have to pay for that? Yeah, I think every country has uh, its own policy, uh, right, uh, Rainer? And then 
uh, like in Indonesia, Pak Jokowi has made an announcement that he is and or the government will give vaccine for free to all Indonesians. And also, I think what yeah. is important, a vaccine should be injected uh, for those that needs in terms of priorities, such as the elderly, those who are working in the uh, hospital, what we call it first responder, and also uh, the, those who have uh, what you call it comorbid uh, disease. So I think there has to be in terms of priority, I think certain category of people. But at the end of the day, I think I, I fully concur with you. I think it's good that uh, this is a, a, a has to be given for free for, for everyone. So if Indonesia has to develop their own vaccine because do, does Indonesia have to pay to get high success vaccine? Indonesia has to make their own one, which is high success. And that's why we have to invest in STEM because in major epidemics like the COVID-19 pandemic, we have to get something for free and effective. It has to be efficient enough. Like, because my, my dad um, said to me that efficiency and effectivity work together to take, take down and take take down the job um, to help the job yeah yeah agree don't forget the yeah. price ideally it should be free but if it is uh, it has to pay then affordable price so basically if vaccines are made free then that would have a better impact on like the COVID-19 thing, but you have to pay. And I think, yeah, but um, with Indonesia making more vaccines on their own and making vaccines, they could help more people and helping more people would be nice actually, because the world stands as one and, and, and if the world just works for their own, then it's not that good. But if the world just works together, then it's better. That's why I think Indonesia and other countries have to make their own vaccine. I agree. I think Indonesia is making it and Indonesian also working very closely with a number uh, science uh, laboratorium uh, in UK, including Oxford, as well as uh, Imperial College London. Earlier, I had a, a video conference with Om Ben, Om, Om uh, Eric and Om uh, Andra. They are scientists. They are working at the ICL. They are excellent. Yes, we are working. And yes, we have to have our own uh, vaccine. I agree with you. I also know um, Eric very well. He's been in my podcast. He's been in episode 9 oh. and episode nine, wait, 19. Oh, doesn't he, ama- is he? Is he amazing, isn't he? Yeah. he's. Yeah. He, I just like to talk about COVID with him because he's a pulmonologist yeah. and he speaks about lungs and he yeah. can tell me about coronavirus. True, true. Yeah. Right. You have to speak about um, the languages how many languages do you have to learn or what language do you have to be imagine you're going to china the ambassador for china indonesian ambassador do you have to speak chinese for that no uh, uh let me talk about myself i speak english i speak uh, sp- french yeah i knew you speak. i speak uh, bahasa indonesia mm-hmm. i speak I speak Bahasa Jawa mm-hmm. and I speak Bahasa Sunda, but at least I, I, I speak, I'm speaking five languages, but I also try to get used to with the, what you call it, uh, more of a conversation language, like when you meet colleague from China, then you have to say, Ni hao ma, meaning that, how are you? Right. When, when you meet a colleague, uh, a diplomat from uh, yeah. Arab country, you have to say, Kaifal Hal, how are you? When you meet a colleague from uh, uh, Latin America or from Spain, you, you are supposed to say, ¿Qué tal, cómo estás? So I think uh, this is uh, the good thing uh, to break the ice. But as an ambassador, you don't have to speak all the language, but rest assured, 
when you speak the language of that particular country, like a French, they will be honored, they will be happy, they will be thrilled when you speak in their language. This is the key of success also uh, being a diplomat to be able to speak a number of or other foreign languages. That's amazing that I know so many um, languages, I would say. How are you? Um, you say, how, how are you? Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that's like amazing because only uh, I can only say how are you in English though. But um, languages are actually good for friendship because imagine if you have a thousand friends in Indonesia and you want more and you have to speak French to get one. I think languages are a good bridge to having new friends. And also I can say, hi, my name is Reina and I like science. And do you want me to say it in French? Je m'appelle Reina, uh, Reina, je l'aime beaucoup science. Um, this is how I thought to say it. Je m'appelle Reina, j'adore science. Um, ah. it... Tu parles français aussi alors? Alors, I think means mine. Can, can you speak French? Oh. Oui. Uh, on, va, on va parler en français. Tu parles français ou pas? Tu parles français ou pas? Uh -huh. I don't know what that is. Because you said, uh, I asked you, I was asking you, do you speak French? Because you said perfectly well, je m'appelle Rainer. J'adore la science. Ça c'est parfait. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, don't really um, speak that much of French, but I can tell my numbers until 59. Um, oh. And I can say my name. Yeah. Um, although I'm learning it. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think uh, Rainer is, is very important. Apart from science, yes, extremely important science. But when you speak the language, I think you learn about other people culture, other people uh, habits bit and other people's uh, thinking as well so i think it will be extremely useful as well if you have other than english it's not a mass it's not a mass but at least there will be added value to it and can i also tell you why stem is important for the future again because my, i just want to really send a message about how stem is really important well, STEM is important because it can help Indonesia innovate and it can help Indonesia go through mass, um, you know, like mass disasters like the COVID-19 pandemic. You could use STEM, the science in it and the technology, those are the vaccines and you could engineer vaccine to stop that and, and STEM is not enough and if it's not enough try steamed you need some design if you need to build i don't know like a submarine something if there's an endangered life form and indonesia can basically just thrive more and better and be a better place with stem and steamed and i think that's why STEM is important. Do you agree with me? Definitely, because by mastering and very good in STEM, one thing, first, we should be able to predict what will happen, right? Yeah. In, yeah. Including, like, let's say, natural disaster or making uh, assessment to the future. Secondly, with STEM, we can mitigate the damage that happened. Right, oh, yeah. and thirdly, we can also make a plan about the future. So I think this is extremely important. I fully agree with you. Then we are talking about designing something, and then uh, mitigating, making plan to the future. For example, climate change or global warming. Right, we know this is real. 
but we just yeah. not it's not enough when we say we know it it has to be science based right if we know it then we can anticipate what would happen if we don't reduce emission the carbon Yeah, you have to predict right? what will happen. Indeed, okay. we have to predict. Yes, we have to predict. Correct. And secondly, now we need also to mitigate the situation, how to reduce it. Then with STEM, we can also make plan. Let's say 15, 20 years in the future, we have to do certain plan in order to maintain our earth the globe and also to reduce emission and make sure the global warming can be controlled and also because of the global warming it's a bit scary because of the ice caps melting and we researchers said that if the ice caps melt then there's going to be some islands um that will um be submerged in Yeah. Um, my memory is kind of bad because uh, it's quite a while ago, like three, three, four years ago. I watched this video and it said that if I, all of the ice caps melt, England would be covered in water. England, and that's pretty scary if you think just a melting piece of land would do it. And also, I got a question for STEM in Indonesia and the kids. So if kids are willing to learn and they want to learn, can you do something so Indonesia can learn from the UK universities like Oxford and Cambridge, like what it's like about how to prepare for learning and why is learning important? Um, maybe the people from Oxford and Cambridge can actually motivate the people from Indonesia, help Indonesians actually improving the education and innovating Indonesia. Yep. Uh, Rainer, I think being Indonesian ambassador in UK, one of my priority is education. To make yeah. Indonesian people, the manpower, more quality. How, how? I think, yes, linking excellent university like uh, Oxford or, or Cambridge or Imperial College London to name a few yeah. the excellent uh, research center with Indonesia how to link it I think we can send Indonesian student to study here but we can we can also invite professors scientists from UK to teach in Indonesia Blessing in discuss with COVID, I think they don't have to travel. Those professors, those scientists from Oxford and Cambridge, from ICL, they can have a Zoom meeting and then they can also share their expertise and knowledge with Indonesian student or Indonesian uh, lecturer in Indonesia. This is my one of my priorities as well. Can, can kids of me um, be a part of a team to visit um, Ox Oxford, Cambridge. If your mom and dad allows you, then I'm more than happy to invite you and bring you to Oxford and, and to Cambridge. But make sure that mom and dad are okay. So, so I'm gonna check with them and then I'm actually gonna go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So part this right? What do you do um, if you're, I mean, Om Desra, um, I just forgot. What do you do if you're not at work or you have free time? Because there's quite a bit of free time in the COVID situation. And I also know from Instagram that you play the saxophone and you support Arsenal from your jacket. Is that, is that true? And you play the saxophone too? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Renner, What? you understand about brain. We are talking about science first, brain. Mm -hmm. Left brain, logic. Mm -hmm. Right brain, art. Linear thinking, mathematics, right? More of the logic things. Left brain. Right brain, 
It's about artistic institution. It's about art. It's about feeling, mm-hmm. right? As a human being, then we have to balance between left brain and right brain, mm-hmm. between your rational, your logic, and your art, your intuition. That's mm-hmm. why I always want to have science think- being applied to myself, meaning that to balance between left brain and right brain. On the left brain, I think what I did certainly logic in terms of working, uh, uh, thinking also. This is uh, the sequencing the left brain, but like uh, but the sport including sport. But then I have to do also art intuition by playing music. So I think my ultimate uh, goals is uh, applying science in terms of brain, left and right. It has to be balanced. That's why. Yeah. On my life, exactly. I on my life I often use it for work. Um, mm-hmm. If I am have to be angry, and then I'll be angry using this uh, left brain, more of rational logic. Um, but when it comes to the right brain, this is about playing music. It's about art, about rhythm, mm-hmm. and also. This kind of thing. So I think uh, balance. Then the answer is, I do cycling, I do jogging, but at the same time I'm also playing saxophone to balance my brain left and right. Yeah, I also agree with you. And Mozart and Beethoven are actually geniuses. Mm-hmm. And um, I think how they make those. Um, Uh, good music. I think Mozart has has a good balance because if you got the, the logic, like what would sound best, and you know the music logic and the art, like what actually sounds better? Would they like this? Like you need to have a good balance to have a, a good work and a good. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Talking about your brain, which one is uh, more dominant, your left brain or right brain? I like to say um, my my left brain uh, because it, m- I like to do maths and um, I like to do sports. So yeah. um, my left brain um, I can memorize fifty digits of pi. Yeah. Um, that just reveals all that um, I'm more left brain. Um, it's my left brain. This, this yeah. is my, this is my right brain. This, yeah, yeah. Basically. So you don't play any music. Yeah. But I'm at school. Um, I'm in mean the holidays at school. Um, I like to do music, and I find music actually fun because yeah. you you're just making noise like music. My teacher said that music is actually noise, like yeah, like someone screaming, but actually sounds good, like someone screaming, but then sounds good basically. But, but, Yeah. Screaming's a bad way, though. So it's actually a good sound. It's music. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you need a harmony in it. Like you need harmony in the music. Yeah. Make sure Very some cool. things. Um, you make sure. Imagine this is a bar. This is a guitar. Guitar. This is a piano. You want to use a guitar and piano. They have to be in harmony with each with each other to balance out. Yeah. And basically, and- also, Rainer, everything. In the earth is about harmony as well, yeah. right? So, uh, like uh, everything will try by itself naturally to balance, right? Let's say if you put water, and then water will try to balance, right? Because of uh, gravi- uh, what you call it, uh, gravitation. Yeah, yeah. Water will always try to balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as there's gravity. Yeah. Can you play a saxophone, if possible? All right. Um, I won't be long. Um, let me prepare first. Uh, with the music or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Have like you heard? Music. Have you heard the song uh, "Over the Rainbow"? No, no, no. This is about dream. Okay. So, so yeah. this matches. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm really excited to hear this. Can you hear me? I stop here. I may, I, def, I deliberately skip the refrain because I want to present the refrain in person when I meet you, and I will play. I promise the full version of the song when I see you in person. Okay. Thank you, Om Desra. That was a really nice thing. And I think I want to play and learn the piano or saxophone because when my friend, he sent me a video of him playing the piano, it was nice, but the saxophone thing just like, just inspired me to do music. I'm going to ask my mum as soon as I can to get a saxophone or if I can practice music, but I need lessons. Indeed. I think uh, music, there is an element of science into it as well. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Right? It's not as, as a music as it is. No. You rightly pointed out about the uh, harmony. And secondly, certain sound represents also a certain frequency, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, um, you, you know those... Um, you know those creepy music and then there's the screeching thing? It kind of represents like something scary, but like a nice... Um, happy birds chirping actually presents like a nice day. You can actually tell because when you say so like birds chirping, you can imagine there's a nice sun, a rainbow, there's birds coming. Yeah, yeah. You can really imagine. So yeah. Basically, music is like the language without words, but a language with notes and um, different instruments. Like, yeah. Instead um, of using a phone to communicate, you can. Yeah. Use your saxophone, like, there's something really creepy going on. That's your mind then saxophone. Yeah. It's like a creepy sound. <laughs> and also music is universal. It has no boundary. Yeah, it has no boundary because there can be infinite numbers of music. Yeah. Each, yeah. So, so I think music, and I agree with you, music's actually quite cool. Yeah. Can I ask you one question, another question, please, Rainer, if you don't mind? What's the question? Like, yeah. When you grew up, what exactly do you want to be? What is your dream? Because you cannot say that I want to be a scientist, but there are so many types of scientists, like uh, expert on the outer space, on the minerals, on virus. Uh, what exactly you want, you want to be? as a scientist and what's your dream the thing is um i've changed but i've kept on one i want to be a molecular biologist or oh. more a uh, more an, an organic chemist i don't know the difference but because i like molecules i like organics and i mm. like chemistry i like mm. biology because it just fascinates me how these tiny mindless cells they mm -hmm. work together and then 
the cells just make bodies like us are actually made of trillions of cells and I'm just like really amazed at that just tiny minus things and I also want to do molecular biology because in my episode cut visa I talked about CRISPR and I just really want to use CRISPR to help humanity and Indonesia like if there's a virus then I could make them immune to viruses simply by editing their immune system cells. And CRISPR is very powerful, even in molecules. And and actually it's quite complex and it stands for, I don't mean to show off, but it's clustered regulatory interspace short palindromic repeats. So basically means clustered means there's lots of regular interspace space short tiny clustered space pa- palindromic mm. repeating mm. repeats so it repeats again and again and again it's these yeah. clusters and crispr is actually quite useful in the future and so sometimes in maybe even 50 years we might even eliminate coronavirus mm. in this yeah yeah if i may also ask thank you very much i uh, think amazing if i could ask uh, you another question in terms of ranking the most do you like from stem which one science technology engineering math which one in terms of ranking the most you like it's actually extremely hard i like science i like technology i like engineering i like mm-hmm. math can't really pick so i think first is science mm-hmm. second is just like a plank length below mm-hmm. math mm-hmm. then plank length below is um, technology mm-hmm. then after that is engineering like you know like I mean, en- engineering and technology i just uh have to put one below and i have to put one on the top Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it's just, um, it just makes me uncomfortable trying to pick one of them. But STEM has to be the main focus, not science in it, not technology in it, not maths, not engineering. The STEM has to be together. Being together actually brings the best together. STEM is like, here's a fragment of the best, fragment of the best, fragment of yeah. the best, fragment of the best. Super glue, super glue, super glue it, put it together, you get the best actually, you get the most, the most best, yeah. Right. Basically, so basically I think the best thing you can do is use STEM. STEM is important. Um, STEM is the STEM to your dream, STEM to innovation. And that's why scientists have to work together because scientists like the STEM. Scientists are actually good. They're good, they're good, they're good. We just need to make them go together and then they make something amazing. Like Mm -hmm. Jennifer Dona and his team, they work together to harness CRISPR. And that's why um, teamwork makes the dream work. You You know that saying? Yeah. That's why that's important. Yeah. You know what, Rainer? I cannot stop asking you. The more you give me answer, the more we interact, the more I want to ask you question. My very, very last question, I promise. Yeah. Who is your role model you uh, want to follow? And who is the person you really, really, really want to meet? people I really want to meet and it's actually I want to meet Jokowi I want, mm. I want to meet Jokowi Dodo I want to meet Gita Wariamon I want to meet Elon Musk because I like to talk with the people above me because they could really teach me something like mm. if they um if Elon Musk says to me you want to meet me? I said yes. And after that, when I actually come, he's gonna ask me to go on the rocket. I say no. I I wouldn't want to go on the rocket more. I just want to learn because education is 
more important. And also Jamal Khalili because he is in the University of Surrey in the UK. Mm-hmm. You know him, and if you do know him, may you contact him for me because I'm just dying to um, I'm just dying to know. All right. I, I I don't promise, but I will do my utmost to make sure on on uh, Pak Jokowi and Mr. Khalili. But you haven't answered my second, uh, my first question: the role model you want to follow. Yeah, the role model. Actually, I've... Jamal Khalili is my role model, but that's not all of them, um, because yeah. he is a scientist mm-hmm. who communicates, and if you're a scientist and then you, you keep quiet about like. I'm like, this, this is your mind talking. I've discovered nuclear fusion. I'm not gonna tell it to anyone. Then uh, you have to be a communicator. Mm. You have to be a. You have to be a communicator because communicating actually is like the news. Imagine if you had the news and then the news actually didn't say anything. You wouldn't trust it. So, Jamal Khalili helps people learn and understand about science. And the next one I want to be is like Jennifer Dovna because she does biology, and bi- biology is like number one for me. Mm-hmm. Next one is um, what, what's the name of the um, Watson um, you know the guys who found out the double helix of DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, I like those because they work together and they had molecules. They learn about DNA, and I find DNA fascinating. And I also want to, my role model is Gita Wiyawan because he supports STEM and he wants to make STEM number one priority in Indonesia, just like me. Mm. And when you hear that, I just think that there has to be some sort of group who supports STEM. And obviously, if the group gets too large enough, they'll be like, okay, we have to make most of the Indonesians be happy. Stem, stem, stem. And I feel like he uses stem, and then Indonesia is good. Yeah, yeah. I extremely agree with you. Stem is very important. Education is very important as well. Uh, I learned a lot from you, Renner. Although you are still, quote unquote, you are still a baby, but I learned a lot from you from this conversation. I promise my very, very last question. Who do you love the most, your mom or dad? Oh, see, if my mom sees this recording or my dad, we're going to be extremely fierce, like, kaka, nga bole, as you like, uh, um, I like both of them. Uh-huh. They actually work together because my mom cooks nice food. My dad um, does, um, my dad um, helps me um, learn about binary and he helps me learn complex stuff. And my mom also, because my mom always does funny jokes whenever I'm a bit sad, like she makes funny jokes, just yeah. like any other parents, but they're actually more than any other parents because Good, they just think I'm special, even though I'm actually not. Yeah. I'm not meaning to insult myself, but Parents have to respect their children, um, I can tell because they always um, give surprises on my birthday and they always have, yeah, the parents um, the parents must listen to their kids. And that's what I like to do in Sanclopodia because parents have to listen to their kids because if the parents just ignore their kids and the kids might get annoyed and the kids, um, the kids have to tell stories and if the kids tell stories, then the kids will actually be happy. And parents can also learn from their kids. And so sometimes my, my dad learned um, about, I don't know, something. So I think that's why families have to communicate to each other. Agree? Yeah. Rehan, yes, uh, family has to communicate. Communication in the family is very important. Loving and caring in the family is also very important mm. but remember uh, parents also have s- certain responsibility in which children do not understand yet when you grow up I think you would understand or you would do the same to your 
children later on later on later on i well children loves to play games but i think as a parent we have to remind children no game is uh, yes game is okay but you are not supposed to spend so much time on games yeah. studying is very important because uh, this is about your future as well right yeah 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 So, so I think we've talked a lot, and um, I'm just really tired. That, but um, we've talked a lot, and I, you must have had a lot tomorrow, and I, I think it would be time for you to have a rest tomorrow. And do you have anything else to say on this, Ra? You know, to be honest, I admire you. I am now becoming one of your fan. I would like certainly to get in touch with you in person. I promise uh, to play the rest part of the song, and un- I encourage you to convey the message, very important message about STEM. Yes, yeah. to Indonesian, to your colleagues, your friend, the children. STEM is about the future of Indonesia. And the future of Indonesia will also rely on STEM. You are the future leader of Indonesia, uh, Rehan. I think uh, study hard, please study hard, focus on it, dream high, and I pray. And I I pray for you as well, for your success, for your health, Rehan. Do respect you. My name is Raina. My name is Raina. Arena, oh, you know what? When you get older, you always uh, having this slip of time. <laughs> Arena, um, love and care your family. Yeah. Respect your mom and dad. Whatever they say, I'm hundred percent st- uh, believe. I'm hundred percent sure. This is also for the good of you in the future. Yeah. So, so I'd like to thank you for being on my podcast on this right and I just feel so happy and honored that I can be talking with you and I hope you can do your duty and I wish to meet you in person one day and I also thank you. And 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 just just before I say bye can we conclude um by you playing saxophone? Okay. Okay. This is a request or a, re- a, re- a, re- a instruction from you. Request. Okay. Let's hear the good music. Uh, this is in honor of uh, the month of uh, December. What is so special about December? Christmas. Oh yeah. <laughs> saxophone and i also learned a lot from you i learned about stem indonesia and yeah like there's just so much i learned today likewise uh i think 
you can tell that adults can also learn and adults also learn from the kids from the children like you and in this case ambassador of indonesia has been learning from rena mm -hmm. and i'm proud to say that thank you and see you on desra bye stay healthy bye. stay safe rena be safe and healthy on desra bye thank you bye Oh